guys, hello! I'm back with an awkward drop-in. One of these days, my prayer request of not doing awkward intros will come to fruition, it will be answered. Anyways, hi, <laughs> sorry. What's up guys? And I'm not even gonna apologize, I'm gonna jump right in. So I'm hopping in here today because so many of you guys in my last video uh, liked having like a life update, a chatty life update. And I have more that I can talk about always. So I've hopped in here to chat with you guys about, yes, like a life update, more things that we have going on. And also um, some questions that I have been asked lately, just kind of random topics. So some of this is like housing updates. I guess I don't need to give you all the details, but yeah, life updates, house updates, random things I've been asked. I'm back here today with the double braids. I wear my hair in braids a lot because I only wash my hair, wash, wash, wash. I only wash my hair like once a week, um, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less. And braids are like my go-to thing. And apparently even finding hair ties that match is quite the ordeal. And I'm not gonna lie, after I braided my hair this morning, I was like, oh man, I braided my hair in my last update video. Like I kind of like to switch it up a little bit but I'd already done it. I forgot that I had already set aside this time to film and I just wanted to sit down and talk with you guys. So I guess the first update I wanted to give is on our office. A lot of you guys have been asking like um, what we're gonna be putting in it, what that room even really is. And so I guess just to kind of give you guys an update, that is gonna be our office for a while. I actually am really excited because I've never used Facebook Marketplace before. I have like all of my friends have and people have raved about it to me. But I've never, to be honest, I've never even really understood how to search on the platform or how to find things. It's made me really nervous trying to connect with people. We, as like a family unit, have bought something off Facebook Marketplace before. Dan actually bought our glider, like the rocking glider that I would rock Logie to sleep in um, at our house in Nashville. He got that off Facebook Marketplace and that was great. And today, or last night actually, I found like the perfect desk for my office. I basically just wanted a writing desk, but if I could get like a couple drawers, that was going to be great too. And I wanted it to be kind of this raw, distressed wood look um, that we're kind of going for throughout a lot of points in our house, like our floor, our fireplace mantle. Like I wanted that look. And if this desk is as great as it looks in the pictures, um, then I've found like the perfect desk, exactly the desk that I wanted. So we're gonna go pick that up later. But this room is going to be our office for a while. Now, eventually, potentially within like the next six months, it's going to become like a kind of a guest bedroom, a second storage room. Um, well, a guest bedroom when needed. It's not like we're planning on having tons of guests, but we will have some guests and there'll be, you know, storage in there. But I don't know if I, if you guys know this, but our garage is a three car garage and we're actually planning on converting the one car part because it's got like two garage, garage doors. I definitely did tell you guys this because I'm flashing back to the fact that somebody sent me a TikTok with a garage door that was like glass and they were like, you need to do this. And I'm like, oh, in my dreams. So we're converting that into an office so that we can have a separate space as we God willing have more children um, to step away and you know record sound and just work and all of that. And Dan does you know work on the computer and stuff, but Dan also has his simulator. So to those of you that didn't know this or haven't been following my channel long enough, Dan actually learned how to race cars legitimately on a simulator. So he's actually done some pro racing with NASCAR. He did a few K&N pro races. Um, I actually got to sing the national anthem at a race in Iowa. So pretty cool. We, Dan's not like actively pursuing racing per se, but he's not letting it go. He loves his simulator. He had the time of his life in the cars. We'll see where that takes him, but that's part of what is going to be in our office as well is his simulator. Um, also, you know, my piano, all of our equipment, all of that. Now, that's kind of something else I wanted to touch on was my music goals for the year. Um, now, a lot of you guys know that when we moved to Nashville, we moved for a lot of different reasons and the tippy top reason actually being kind of like woo woo wee wah, really just feeling like we felt like that was where God was calling us for that next for the next chapters in our life. 
Um, but if there's like a bunch of different reasons layered, one of them was the fact that Nashville is like music city. And I've said this a bunch of times that, you know, Los Angeles, which is where I'm born and raised is just beaming, like teeming. That's the word with, uh, talented artists and musicians and actors and dancers and singers and all of that. But the music scene in Nashville was totally different than what I had seen or experienced in the music, uh, scene in LA and it was really life-changing and I kind of thought when I moved to Nashville that I wanted to record like at least a few songs I wanted to get some written with friends and do almost like a mini EP like three to five songs I wanted to just have that so that if and when we ever moved out of Nashville I left with that I didn't do that surprise surprise I have so many goals in my life that like never come to fruition which is funny and should help you not feel discouraged because on the flip side, I have so many goals that have come to fruition in my life that it's a little easier to swallow pills of things that I'm like, mm, that didn't go as planned. And actually most of the time, however things unfold, I'm like, wow, thank you God for not giving me what I wanted. That's a little random because it's music and whatever. I did, um, meaning like I'm insinuating that could have been a bad thing and that's not really what I mean. I'm just saying in general, the way that God has unrolled things in my life so often I look back and I'm like, wow, that was great. So backing up when I was in Nashville, I definitely could have done that. I made a lot of music friends, um, both just like casually like writers and, uh, fellow singers and amazing instrumentalists. But I also met producers and engineers and people like within record labels. And I actually went to some like industry parties and, and had a little bit of involvement with the Grand Ole Opry, which is like a big deal. And with the Ryman in Nashville. So it was, I had opportunities. I didn't push to make it happen, if that makes sense. I almost felt like it wasn't ever the right time. And I don't know if that was like self-sabotage or just true. I mean, I guess it just is what it is because that's what happened, but I didn't do it. But the thing is, I, I love music so much. And I actually still have a song that I wrote with a friend when I was out there that I actually do want to record at some point because every time Dan and I sing it or talk about it, we're like, that is such a good song. So I literally might record it one day. But that being said, my music goals for the year are more vague. They're not necessarily project driven. They're more like skill driven. So when I started playing piano, one of my top like goals was to be able kind of not like a party trick, but we'll call it that like party trick. I wanted to be able to be somewhere and be like, what song do you want to hear? And then like pull up the chord sheet on guitar taps and be like, great, here we go. Ba, 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 ba. And just be able to like play chords by sight. I have a really good memory with music anyways. So like if I even kind of know the song and then I see the chord sheets, I can totally play it, which is kind of fast forwarding. That goal was kind of achieved. Like when I started playing piano, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to just have fun, grab a chord sheet, play and sing. And over the course slowly of the last few years, I've gotten that because to those of you that don't know, the way that I've kind of learned to play piano as an adult has been kind of using like the slight edge method, which is where the kind of the concept of like compounding interest and continuing to move forward at something, even if it's just a tiny bit consistently. And that's how I've learned how to play piano. I've never put in like hours and hours and hours and hours of like rigorous repetitive practice, but I've consistently shown up for the last four years to practice and grow my skills. And my goal for this year, I have two goals with music that I really want to hone in on when I'm playing. One, I want to pause before I play a song. So like when I pull up my, my chord sheet, a lot of times I just get so excited. I just like start playing, but I want to pause and I want to start memorizing like the chord structures in a song before I play them. So I don't have to look at the sheet so much. So maybe it's not fully memorized, but I've at least looked and I understand kind of the pattern. So I want to develop more of a memory for chord structures. Um, and then also this is a continuous goal. I want to get better at my pitch. Like I like singing wise, I don't have bad pitch. I have pretty decent pitch, but I don't have like the greatest pitch and I have good enough pitch in my head to know that my pitch isn't that great. Like I'm in the ballpark, I'm there. Sometimes I'm right on, but I can just hear it every time. It's like throwing a dart at the board and then I know like, Wee, that wasn't quite right there. Um, I still, sometimes I still put stuff out. Like I think in my last day of my life, I, I put in a little clip of me singing somewhere over the rainbow and I can hear where my pitch is faulty. I still put it out though for the same reason I put a lot of my stuff out because I just, 
want to share. I think the journey is really fun to share. Um, and it's cool to watch people get better, right? So I just put that little clip in there. Not like that was a ton, but just saying. So those are my two goals for the year is like in life, I want to eventually become someone where it's like my pitch is so good. People are like, dang, she's always on. Cause I just feel like that's like singing 101, like actually singing to the melody of the song properly. So um, that and memorizing chord structures, that's kind of random, but I thought I would just fill you guys in because a lot of you guys have told me over the years that like sharing with you my adult piano development and just music and all of that has encouraged you to pursue things with within your life, hobbies, interests, or even specific instruments. Um, because yeah, I, I took piano as a kid. I remember none of it. And it was basically like starting from zero as an adult. And it's been so worth it. Like, so I'm so excited for like, I don't know, the next 10 years. I was just watching a music video the other night, actually. And I know this song is super controversial and I'm not even going to go off on a whole tangent. Although I could, maybe I'll do that in another video. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, just like faith. Well, faith. I'm always thinking about faith, but this whole concept I'm trying to not spin off on. But I was watching the music video to a song called Gyra by a band at a church called Elevation Worship. And what I was going to say is I know they're super controversial and I actually already understand all the controversy around the song, around them. But I love that song. And I was playing it last night on the television. I was watching one of their like mashup, whatever. And I think, and I should know him because I know I'm like 12 years late to this. I think he's really, really popular in like the Christian music sphere, but his name's Chandler Moore. And he was, the way he was playing piano and singing, I literally was like, I want to be like that in a decade. I, and what I mean is like, I want to be able to play with the level of comfort that I've seen a lot of piano player singers do where they're able to actually play and they don't have to have their eyes on the piano the whole time. And they can just really get into it and become one with their instrument. And my dad is, he's not a singer, but he's like that with his guitar. Like he doesn't have to be looking. He can just like jam. He's such a good player. Um, but I hope to be like that with my piano one day because I love singing, but I really love getting to accompany myself. Like making the music with your own like hands and voice is just, it's so cool. So I hope that's me one day, guys. I hope that's me with great pitch, like vibing out to my piano, not even really looking. Anyways, next thing, I have faith goals written down. And really what I mean by that is just kind of as, it's kind of the same every year, honestly, is that I want to continue to pursue truth and pursue God in my everyday and getting to know him more and more. And part of that practically is just continuing to try to be in scripture um, every single day. And that's not something I'm great at. I'm in the word, but I often miss days. It's not every single day. Um, so, you know, I just, I wanna continue to grow my faith in that way, uh, continuing to learn and grow. And I have to be honest, that's like, I'm naturally inclined that way. Like I enjoy trying to pursue truth. I've been pretty like down the wormhole in terms of like faith and apologetics, I guess you would say for the last like six, ish plus years and I've mentioned this before a lot of that really came from the amount of questions and criticism um that I've received from people on the internet you know prior to being on the internet faith was simpler in some ways because there were questions that I didn't even think about and I'm not talking about like questions about God but kind of meaning just like if someone's going to ask me a specific question, I didn't know how to answer. And you don't have to know how to answer every question. And it's not even necessarily all about answering, right? Because we don't all have answers. But this idea of just wanting to know things for myself. And also, yes, wanting to be able to have conversations with people. And I can't remember exactly how it's, it's phrased in the Bible. But being able to have an answer for the hope that you have. And like why you have that hope. And and what that means and what that is, an answer for your faith. Um, that actually might be like the definition of apologetics. I don't remember. I'm definitely mixing up thoughts right now. I just want to continue to grow in my, my relationship with the Lord and my, what's the word, uh, confidence in truth. Like that's what I want to continue to grow as well. So, okay, a couple things, other life updates I wanted to talk about. First one, homesteading goals. So Dan and I are over, in or over our heads right now with housing projects, but doesn't really matter because 
I, we both, I was gonna say I, but we both really want to garden this spring. We are not not gardening just because we're up to our eyeballs and house projects. So I'm about to start um, kind of planning the gardening garden and pulling out seeds and figuring out, okay, when do we need to start some of these seeds? How are we gonna do that? What are we actually gonna do for our garden this year? So we're about to start working on that and um, just really starting to get our head around like, how are we going to homestead here? Because someone actually commented on my videos recently, they were like, man, like you used to have your little homestead in the city, now you have your little homestead in the mountains. And it's both. So even though we are in the mountains, like we are literally pushed up to a mountain, we are actually still in a city. We are in town, especially like for this area, like anyone that lives in the outlying areas calls this area like the big city or town or whatever. Um, so it's just, you know, it's way smaller way smaller than like what I'm used to and what I grew up with in terms of town size, but it's still a city. So it's still our little homestead in the city slash mountains. And so trying to figure out what that's gonna be this spring is gonna be interesting because we really want chickens as you guys know, and we're not quite sure when to really make that happen, when we want to bring them into our home, for sure where we're even gonna get them. Dan feels pretty particular about what kind of breed he wants this time around. Um, our, I think they're called Red Sussex. Our, our basically Big Red, which was one of the chickens we had at our last house, um, was like his favorite. I loved her too, she was great. But she also laid really big eggs. And that's like the primary reason we want chickens is for their eggs. And they're just gonna be really fun to have around. Like Logan loved having the chickens and he wasn't even old enough to like understand how to engage with them. So yeah, just thinking about all of this and like what are we gonna do next? You know, the real like top priority right now is for me is getting our cabinets finished. This has been like the longest project in the world. Such a beast. I really need to tie these up because that's a big part of what's making me feel like we're camping out here. Another big part is we have done nothing to the front part of the house yet. So we're planning on, Dan's gonna build us a dining room table and we're trying to figure out what kind of um, couch and or chairs we want to get for like a sitting room situation. like. Are where we're gonna buy them from. I'm doing a bunch of research. It's like, am I gonna stumble across something awesome on Facebook Marketplace? Are we gonna go through like a Wayfair? Like, what are we gonna do? So um, are we gonna go antique shopping? I've looked around at some Goodwills. I'm not sure. I mentioned this before, a lot of stuff got left behind in Nashville. So we actually have to purchase a few things. And so trying to figure out like, how is that money gonna be spread out? What's, what's the best first thing? What can we afford? What needs to go where? Like, you know, it's just an ordeal to move. And if anything like if I've learned anything from this move that is one thing I've really learned like don't forget Nikki moving's a big deal like if I forgot I've not forgotten anymore because this has been a big deal um you know another thing I had on here this is really random but I don't think I told you guys this you don't even really need to know this but it was just in my notes in the last video I talked about like stupid accidents I've been getting into and how I have never had so many accidents in my life as I've had since moving here and you know someone mentioned in the comments that it probably has to do with like overwhelm and trauma of the last seven months and everything that went down and I think you're totally right that like I've been a little disconnected from just my body because yeah it was like it's literally been I've had so many burns like on the stove I broke my toe I told you guys about that falling through the floor but another thing is I dropped my phone in my parents jacuzzi which is like I, I mean I don't know I've had phones now for like 20 years I've maybe dropped one in water ever and it was like it fell in like a cup of water that was like open in the car it was this whole weird thing but that I just like dropped straight in the jacuzzi I was like what like not like me and what stinks is because I'm so out of control sometimes almost nothing was backed up and that was that was like my Logan phone that's the phone I got like two weeks before I had Logan and so I was pretty upset about that I'm less upset now because I've realized I realized as like the month unfolded it was like okay a lot of photos came back through my Lightroom app because I forgot I was logged into Lightroom and so it downloads and saves lots of photos so I have a lot of important pictures um, backed up now and then the other thing is obviously our lives are on the internet and so we're able to download and save a lot to our hard drive but um kind of crazy I just I lost so much it was such a bummer um, but yeah, I don't even know why I'm giving that up. I just random updates. Oh, and, and the last update on that note, speaking of Logan's phone, um, is that I, yeah, I mean, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I 
hope that God blesses us with a child soon. Like I said, I'm not pregnant. And it's been one of those things where like getting my period the last two months has been, yeah, disappointing. And I told Dan, I really feel for women who, who struggle with infertility because even just two months in a row of having my period come, it was like, oh, that's like, it's a bummer. Um, so a lot of people had, have kind of been asking me when I say certain things like, oh, are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? Because I've said a few times, like, we are trying to get pregnant now. Now that we're in the house, we want this to happen again. But no, I am in fact not. So I will keep you guys posted. Um, I've told Dan that every month that I don't get pregnant, things get more real. Like that's when it's gonna be more, like everything's gonna get more focused. Like, okay, maybe now we try some ovulation strips. Like, we'll just see. I'm not stressing per se, but it is weird because I, I waited so long to have Logan in life. And I know I'm not that old, but it, you know, it's not like I'm at the beginning of my fertility either. And so it is a little weird to be like, man, I waited so long. I, I hope that my body can do this again. And I feel like it can, and it's going to be just fine. But having like one child and looking at him and being like, you're a straight up miracle. How did you even get here? It is so surreal. Like, um, That was dramatic. He's such a miracle. Experiencing birth and just like a person coming out of nowhere is such a miracle. And I'm so grateful. And I really hope that I get, and I really hope I get to do it again. So um, that's where we're at. I don't know, I did not, I mean, there's nothing that emotional. I didn't expect to cry. It's just, it's breathtaking sometimes to think that I, wasn't going to have a child. I thought for a long time I didn't want to have a biological child. You guys know for a lot of different reasons, chronic pain, children that are in the foster system, um, kids that need to be adopted. There were a lot of reasons. And I like shudder if that's the word sometimes thinking back because I look at Logan and I'm just like, I am so grateful that I've gotten to experience the miracle of him, of his life watching him, you know, just come into the world. And I'm grateful for that. And I've said it before online, Dan and I on a side note that is not a side note, Dan and I are still open, very open to the idea of, of adoption one day. Um, but not right now. And I hope that, that God allows me to participate again in the miracle of creating and bringing life into the world. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this life update. I just wanted to, I don't know, sit down and chat with you guys. I will say, say this on that note too. I feel like haters or the people that have jumped onto our train and really dislike us now over the last seven months don't make it this far in the video. So I feel like I can speak pretty frankly at this point. Um, but it's been pretty, it's, without giving it too much attention, it's pretty crazy to see how our motives and our intentions over a lot of things, right, in the last seven months have been completely misconstrued. But that's another one is, is everything surrounding our desire to adopt and foster just like completely misconstrued and it's really sad. And I think I told you guys this, that like when everything went down with Bowser, we got calls from like so many news media outlets, not only about Bowser, but when it then started spiraling into other things about you know our adoption. And it was fascinating because people's listening skills are very bad. I just wanna throw that out there because the way that people heard our story and then completely twisted it, and then the media would say, you wanna give us clarification on this? And I thought, go watch the video. Like we already explained it. I mean, Dan and I were talking about this again the other night. It's just like, it's shocking that people literally think that we had been paired with a child in our adoption process and then dropped them because we couldn't film them. It's amazing, but at the same time, I said to Dan the other night, I'm like, people don't, like you can't understand unless you've been a famous YouTuber or whatever, what it is like to be a famous YouTuber. And that whole thing was complete, it was mind boggling me. I'm like, so none of you heard me say, that when I go out, people will take pictures of me sometimes and tweet them to me or Instagram them to me and say, 
I was too scared to say anything. I didn't want to come up and say hi, but I saw you. No offense if that's you, but in my head, I was always like, this is almost creepier. Why didn't you just come say hi? But that's the kind of stuff that, that happens to us or people will film or whatever. Now that aside, there were so many nerves, not only around that, but even just like normal relationships like being at a birthday party and someone taking a picture of all the kids and then it shows up on Facebook and then suddenly we've violated the rules that were within our like contract with the government with the adoption program and then our kids taken away from us like each country has such specific adoption rules and then even when you get into the states each state and then when you're in a state each county has very different fostering rules like we went through so much down that process that I, I know people do not understand. Um, and you know, I've, I've definitely learned that your words, you can't control how people feel. You can't control what people hear, what they want to hear, or even if they understand you properly. And the other day, uh, Roots and Refuge, Jess, uh, shared something on Instagram that said something, the effect of like, life felt better once I stopped caring if people misunderstood me, like, or once I let people misunderstand me. And I was like, Ooh. And so this message or this whole little part is kind of just me ranting to those of you that actually care about us. And, you know, just thinking about it because people still come at us about that. I mean, it's like now anywhere I go on the internet, it's like a fight of people behind me. Like I can comment congratulations on something like 32 people are fighting about how we're dog murderers and how we wanted to exploit an adopted child, but we couldn't and how we're anti-vaxxers. And it's hard because sometimes you want to explain yourself you, or you want to show receipts. Shall we go there? Um, but being a part of what's come along with being a famous YouTuber is I know a lot of other famous YouTubers. Sorry, I keep putting quotes around it, but you know, it's all, it's all a spectrum. It's relative, but I know a lot of them. And some of them aren't my friends anymore because of everything that unfolded, but some of them are, that's almost besides the point. It's definitely besides the point. So many of them have been in hot water over just drama, right? Because I feel like if you're around long enough, you're going to go through drama or in this day and age, you're going to be canceled at some point. And all of them that have gone out of their way to show receipts or like prove themselves or like explain to everyone, it, it never works. Once they show receipts, then people want more or they think that the receipts are made up or whatever. And it's, it's weird. I've kind of always been like this to a degree anyways. It's like when people misunderstand me, which this has happened throughout my whole life, it's like this combination of like, I want to, I want to clarify things. I just want to be like, no, no, no. And I want to make things clear and be okay and be like, have them know my heart and be on the same page. But then there's also part of me that gets a little snotty that I'm like, I don't have to prove anything to you. Like I already told the truth. It is what it is. I said what I said. You either believe me or you don't. And so I'm very split in that way. But yeah, you know, when everything went down, it was like every single person that could possibly disagree with us, like jumped on us and came at us and were very mad at us and it was a lot of people but it's amazing because now that we've been able to kind of gather ourselves and um you know comments are back open and ways for me to communicate with you guys are back open it's like there's so many of you that that get it and that are still here and that have been so supportive and kind to us and kind to me and and have left me just the nicest messages that you've been watching for like a decade like it's really been cool to see and it's also been really fascinating because as things have been back open you know some of these people that are like so mad at us are like how do all these people still like them or still follow them or whatever and i'm just thinking like you just popped into my like corner of the internet after i've been here making videos for 10 years literally 10 years so all of us were like talking and hanging out and fine and then you came in misinterpreted the situation or didn't you got the situation you still just vehemently disagree with us and now you're pissed but like i have 10 years with a lot of these people and so that's been really cool to see very interesting to see this whole video feels very vulnerable and every time i bring up kind of everything that's gone down or whatever i feel weird because i think i mentioned this before but someone in the comments and it keeps sitting with me was like hey if you want something to stop stop talking about it is they said it nicer than that but that was the gist of what they said and i was like totally but i'm like still recovering from this like in a lot of different ways um and it's weird it's just weird getting used to like 
okay, starting to accept the fact that like, this is probably gonna follow me my whole life, like all of the things that have unfolded in the last seven months. And it's definitely gonna follow me as long as I'm on the internet because people who do not have the same worldview have decided that we are hypocrites or they've totally twisted our story. It's like one of the two. They just don't agree with us. They see us as hypocrites or the story has been twisted and they're mad about something that didn't even happen because that happens too. People will leave comments and I'm just like, that's, you're mad about something that didn't happen. That's not how that went down. So kind of crazy. And until you're caught in the crossfires of some kind of big thing that blows up in the media or whatever, and like, it's like a giant game of telephone, it's almost hard to fathom. Like you can watch and kind of get it, but then when you're caught up in it, it's like, whoa, everything, like your perspective on everything changes because you're like, wow, people can be horrible. People can be rude and people lie. And it's, and it's not just people like, you know, prior to all this happening, I remember talking with a friend of mine one day, we were talking about a different situation, but I was referring to like, man, like I was being kind of mean. I'm like, people can be so dumb. Um, and my friend basically like kind of corrected me and was like, yes, we can be dumb and that's why we need, or, or no, I said dumb and then I said S like such sheep, some kind of like mean phrase like that. And she's like, that's why we all need a shepherd. And I was all, totally, that's why we all need a shepherd. So it's like, even though I'm kind of like mad at this collective group of trolls or people for misunderstanding our heart and our motives and it just makes me so sad, there's also part of me that's like, yo, I'm a mess. And I posted something from a Bible study maybe like two months ago about humility. And it was basically this quote saying something along the lines of like, humility is understanding that I'm actually worse than what they think of me. And I know that that world, that's, that's a weird worldview to understand if you're not a Christian and you don't believe in the concept of sin. And like I said, if you're not a believer, that might be confusing. Like, oh, you're admitting that you're a horrible person. Like in a lot of ways, like I just defended myself this whole time, right? Like knowing my heart and my intentions and my motives. I'm like, no, but then from a faith perspective, yes, I think that we're all fallen. And this idea of having this, I, this thought of like, I'm worse than what they think of me. I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to prove myself to be better um, was just very humbling in and of itself besides the fact that it was like their definition of humility. Um, and so it's just something that I'm still, I'm still processing. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope to see you guys back here soon. I haven't really announced this yet because it's scary for me to make any kind of announcement, but I want you guys to know if you're still watching this, my current goal is to get two YouTube videos up a week. That's kind of what I want to do now. I want to be a two video a week YouTuber and a once a week Patreoner. That's not a word, but I'll close it by saying if you haven't been over to my Patreon, I now have like a full library of content that you can binge watch if you feel like it. And I am going to attempt to try to get one Patreon video up a week. So that is like those of you that have gone over to Patreon, I appreciate it so much because the way that everything went down in the last few months, completely like losing all of our sponsors for the time being, everything got put on pause or completely pulled. Um, after eight and a half years of this being our full-time income, it was pretty crazy. And so Patreon is part of supplementing that income first off, but also it's a way for me to connect with you guys in sometimes a more intimate way. Like when I wasn't back on YouTube, fully, I was able to share so much more over there. So there's a lot of stuff over there that I had never put on YouTube and I don't know if I ever will. Um, but then on top of that, just like exclusive stuff. So like I am actually going to be filming a video coming up next that my friend Kate or Mrs. Midwest here on YouTube uh, said that she thought I should film. So that's what I'm gonna film next. So shout out to you, Kate. Um, but yeah, if you want to check out my Patreon, I'm going to link that down below. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a thumbs up and comment every time you like a video, if you're able to, because that really helps to support my channel. And with all of that being said, I will, God willing, see you guys back here soon with another new video. And yeah, bye guys.